So recently I picked up this old beat up Ludwig Superphonic 5x14 from an old music shop for really cheap. It's in pretty rough shape at the moment, but I had an idea to restore it to make it a gigging drum. Something I could just throw in a case with me or use as a loner drum. I already have a Ludwig Superphonic. It's from 1968 that I already restored that I unfortunately don't have a video of. This one will stay at home with me. This is kind of considered my studio drum, and it's actually one of the first drums that I've ever bought. So this one's not going anywhere. I don't want to risk damaging it in any way. I also added a set of Pure Sound Pro brass snare wires to the bottom side head, and I also added brand new tension rod washers that are made out of nylon. I got these in a hundred pack off of eBay for about $10. I like the nylons because I don't like metal to metal contact from the tension rod to the rim. So that's why I picked those. With that said, let's get started with the restoration.
I didn't mention this earlier, but we're also going to mess with the snare wires. I'm actually going to use this thing called the Broken Opportunity. This is an idea made up by Bob Gadsden. Bob had came up with the idea that you can take any existing snare wire set and clip the broken ones or the ones that you don't want on there to create new sounds and or just fix your snare wires. Now if you clip two snare wires on the right side, you take two off the opposite side to create equal tension. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see what Bob is actually talking about in his video. I don't want to just give it all away. So with my wires, I'm actually going to make them a 14 strand set. I'm going to take two out of the top, two out of the bottom, and two in the very center. You also want to keep these sharp ends out of the way of the resonant side head, so I recommend that you just bend them out of the way. The P88AC. This is actually a snare strainer that Ludwig makes nowadays that actually accommodates the hole spacing for a P85, which that being the standard default that Ludwig used to make. With this said, retrofitting a snare strainer isn't a problem. Now the problem comes with the butt plate. The butt plate actually doesn't fit. This is kind of stupid. You make one part that fits, but the other part does not. This makes no sense to me. At least Ludwig left you some holes so you can tap it out yourself if you wanted to do that, but why have the holes there if they're not threaded in the first place? This makes no sense. Regardless of all the ranting, the P88 is extraordinary. This is a very smooth snare strainer with a very tall thumb placement on the lever. Whenever you engage the snares, it's very quiet compared to a lot of the snare strainers I've seen before. Overall, good job Ludwig. Anyways, I'm going to use the original butt plate that the snare drum came with. I'll make a separate video on the other butt plate on how to tap the holes. Now it's time to reassemble the drum. This is my favorite part. I also didn't mention that I added an internal muffler. When I got the snare drum originally, it didn't come with one, so I had one laying around and I put it on. I actually ran out of screws and bolts when I tried to put it on, so I found some old skateboard parts and I just made it work. I recorded the demo with two Audio-Technica AT2020s on the top and a kick drum mic that's a digital reference. Then those mics are fed into my interface, the M-Audio ProFire 2626. Lastly that's going through Logic and there are no effects on the overheads but there is a little bit of EQ and compression on the bass drum.
Mm-hmm.